Hello, hello. Today we're going to have another in-depth look at one of the species that I keep now that it's fully grown. And this one is the giant African mantis or Sphodromantis gastrica. So let's get him out, have a closer look and just learn a little bit about him and some of the facts around this species. Here he is, ready and waiting to come out. So I'm going to prefix this because this guy is a bit skittish. He always has been ever since he was a little nymph. So I haven't really handled him much and I'm not quite sure how he's going to take to being, uh, being handled today, but we'll find out. Let's hope that he doesn't try and fly. I've got a feeling he probably will. Would you like to come out, mister? Or are you going to run around the cage like a maniac? There we go. He's out. Let's try and get him in a nice position here, see if he'll get up on this leaf. He really doesn't like this um, straw. Would you like to get on here? Might feel a bit more comfortable. There you go. So this is a male, Spodromantis gastrica, from the, I think it would be the genus Spodromantis. So I think there's quite an extensive list of mantids that fall into that category. He's around three inches. The males get to around three inches, the females to around four. So he's, uh, he's quite big for a male, actually. As I mentioned in the past, you can usually tell by the fact that their wings here extend down way past the abdomen, which is a good sign, and also just by the amount of segments is usually kind of the fail-safe way of determining the sex of these creatures. Curiously looking on at us there. Are you all right, buddy? You look a little bit anxious. As the name suggests, you find these guys in the African continent across quite a wide area, and I can't remember them all, so I'm going to read them out. South Africa, Nambia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Democratic Republic of Congo, and East Africa. The ideal temperature for these guys is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and then from 40 to 60% relative humidity. They're fairly hardy and low maintenance, so I'd say whilst they're not sort of the low end of care side of it, they're not too far off. They're not really even an intermediate species. I've had no issues with this guy at all. The only thing I would say is from my experience, these guys, they're fairly skittish. As I said, even from a nymph, this guy was kind of darting around all over the place. They're not so great for handling. And since becoming an adult, I've noticed he will occasionally do threat displays and stuff when I open the enclosure and such. So they're a very handsome species and great to look at. But yeah, you wouldn't really be handling these guys too much. They're more of a kind of display creature, I'd say. Colorations are fairly standard, similar to the giant Asian mantis, just kind of that pure green. They've got, I think he's got like a little white speck on his wing you might be able to see, but they're not quite as big and they're not quite as bulky either as the giant Asians. But one thing without a doubt is that this guy is by far the most interesting one to watch eat, just because they're so good at hunting. I mean, I've seen this guy He's caught things out of the air. I've seen him jump across the enclosure to catch his prey. I've seen him stalk the prey. And he just, he, I was gonna say never misses, but you can guarantee if I tried to give an example, he'd probably end up missing it. But they are absolutely surgical. And I guess that's why they're probably quite a widespread and successful genus, just because their hunting skills are on point. I've never seen this guy refuse a meal either. They, they always eat really well. And on that note, maybe we should get a little fly and see if he is hungry, which I'm sure he will be. I did feed him yesterday, so I don't want to give him anything too big to eat, because I've read that you do need to be a little careful with these guys, because they will just eat quite a lot, and you don't want them to get too big. If they get overblown too much and then they fall or something, they could then rupture their abdomen. So, you know, they're not just going to eat to the point where they explode, but just for their own safety and health and well-being, it's better to you know just tide them over with regular food rather than just eat feeding them until they refuse. And that's something I tend to keep up with most of the mantids because that's another thing you know you you don't want to starve them obviously, but you want to try and not have their metabolism going so quick that they their whole life cycle speeds up because they're just not going to live as long. They'll go through their molts quicker and then they'll reach adulthood quicker and inevitably they'll have a shorter lifespan. So I'd rather just give them, you know, keep them happy, keep them fed as and when they need it. And then you can just enjoy them for longer. I mean, this guy, he must be getting on now. He's probably coming towards the end of his life because I got him at the same time as I got a few videos back. I was talking about how quite a few of my mantids had passed away and I got them all at the same time. This was one of them as well. So he's fast approaching a year now. What's he doing with his bum? 
Do you just do a shit? Dirty boy. Yes, I have some flies here, so I'm gonna pop one of these in the freezer and then we can, once it's chilled a little bit, chill out. We can uh, give him a bit of a, f a little feed, see if he'll take something. Don't go anywhere, matey. I'm surprised he's being this well behaved because I really thought I'd, he would be, f he'd take off as soon as he got the opportunity to. But now he's being a good boy, aren't you? So far, I've said that before. So I've closed the window just in case. All right, flies have been in the freezer for a couple of minutes, which should chill them out enough to stop them buzzing around. Let's get you some dinner. He's never had a name. I kind of called him Speedy Boy from the get-go just because he was so fast. Well, this guy's fairly active as it is. This little fly should give us plenty of action. Let's find out. No messing around. Look at this dude. Absolute savage, never misses. I mean, he ripped that right out of the tweezers. Such precision. Normally they're a bit, uh, not always got the best aim and they take the tweezers with them, but not this guy. All he cares about is that delicious fly. Yum, yummer, yummer. Is there ever a more savage sight than that? He's eating this so quick, I want to get my macro lens on. Just about. Because yeah, I didn't want to give him another one because he might get a little bit porky. So those little uh, receptors on the top of his head, the three, uh, I think they're called ocella, ocelli. Those are actually eyes. My understanding is that they're very primitive eyes and it only detects light. And just like that, the fly is gone. Mad, isn't it? I mean, that's something the size of his head that he's just devoured in about three minutes. That's it. Wash your cutlery. How was that? Do you want some dessert? He's on the move now. Um, where do you think you're going? You better not be planning a little flight expedition, mister. I was going to give you some honey, but if you're going to go up there... He blends in really well with that plant, doesn't he? Here you go, have some honey. Delicious. Don't try and bite through it. Some impressive strength though, isn't it? I mean, these things, they're not weak. You can really feel it. You know, when I, if I try and take this away from him, you can feel the grip he's, that they've got on that. All done. Finish with it. Was that nice? Careful, you're gonna hurt yourself. This stem might be a little bit smooth for him, but he'll be okay. Again, that's probably a good example actually. So yeah, you don't want him too fat, because a fall like that could rupture his abdomen or, or hurt him, but he'll be fine from that. He cushioned his fall with his pathetic little wing display, didn't you? So he looks like, oh, he's doing a threat posture. So this is his threat posture. Basically saying, do not mess with me. So that was just a bit of a warning. I don't think it was a full on fuck off. Because if he'd done that, his wings would come out and he'd go show off his full uh, thematic display. Which is impressive to see. But at the same time, it's not the kind of thing you want to encourage because it does mean that they're feeling threatened. 
and ultimately is a sign that they're stressed. I've given him a minute just to chill out and uh, hopefully he'll be okay now. And there we are. So this is Spodromantis gastrica. I hope you've enjoyed our little foray into learning a little bit more about them. And hopefully we'll have this guy for some time as yet. Sorry, didn't have my mic on. I think you'll agree that these are really interesting little species. A very long antenna, haven't you? Let's get you back in your home now. Here you go. See, now he's not going to want to go back in, is he? he they always do this. They're reluctant to get on my hand. Ugh. But then they don't want to get off it. There you go. Good lad. I'm surprised. He was really well behaved. Stay cool, speedy boy. And that's everything I have for you today. So thanks for taking the time out of your day to check this video out. If you enjoy this kind of content, I do post videos at least once a week, so consider subscribing. But stay safe and I'll see you on the next one.